Urban Harvest is on a mission to provide 100,000 sack lunches to kids in need this summer. They can't do it alone, though, and here with more on how you can help is Forgotten Harvest CEO Kirk Mays. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Hey, I think a lot of, a lot of people need to understand exactly what the need is. Why do we need 100,000 sack lunches uh, for kids? Thanks for asking that question. So, uh, Forgotten Harvest has been uh, actually uh, running this program now for six years. It started um, with one of our agencies, that, our agency partners in Pontiac, and our original goal was to provide a million meals, um, lunches in the summer, and as well uh, food from our mobile pantry program. That, that program has grown, and we now have 40 places in, within our local community that we're, we're delivering lunches up to 100,000 during this summer. And the, and the reason why we have to do this is because when, when our children go to schools where the school itself qualifies for free or reduced lunch, that means that a large percentage, over 80 percent of, of the children there, uh, qualify financially for free lunch because of circumstances um, at home, that meal a lot of times becomes the best meal of the day for that young mm -hmm. person. And when school is out and the summertime rolls around, the, the question is, where do they get that nutrition? Where do they get that dependable meal? And that's where this summer lunch program comes in. We're there to provide summer, summer uh, food for our, our kids who are not in school and may otherwise not have access to fresh, healthy yeah, meals. And that guarantees the nutrition that these kids need in the summertime. What kind of lunch are we talking about here? Um, each um, young person gets a sandwich, um, a snack, a, a, a piece of fruit, and a drink. In each, in each lunch box. Yeah, and so, you know, obviously uh, you want to let people know that the lunches are available for kids that are in need, but of course uh, you guys are always in need of volunteers that can help make those lunches. Absolutely. We would not be able to assemble and pack 100,000 lunches without the generous support of our volunteers. Uh, we also uh, must have the financial contributions of our local community in order to support this program. So uh, those are the two ways that people can really help if they're interested in coming by the warehouse in Oak Park, 21800 Greenfield, and chipping in. We could always use extra hands to pack lunches. Um, but if, if you can't make it by and you can contribute anything um, to help us to uh, fuel this, this, this cause, um, this is something that we really could always use somebody's help. Yeah, it is a fantastic cause as you see information there. What do you hear from families, from students, from kids who receive that lunch? What do they say when they, when they have that lunch for them? Well, you know, obviously uh, folks are really grateful and appreciative of our lunches. Um, what we also know is that as the Child Nutrition Reauthorization Act is being uh, considered in, in Congress, um, we have to also communicate to our decision makers some of the challenges and stresses that come from that program. So we know that more kids would like to be able to have flexible places where they could actually eat those lunches, be able to take some home for their parents, um, and to be able to spread the, the ability of that program to actually help with those children more than in the spot where they're actually getting the food issued. Very helpful program, very appreciative, um, but you know, in instances we can do more right. to be able to help people in the, and to really stretch our service so that we're doing the most dignified approach for right. folks in we our community. We never want to see anyone hungry, especially our children. Kirk, That's thank right. you so much for your time. Thank you so much. I know we'll send it back to you. All right.